Our special guest tonight could be considered the consummate professional communicator because he communicates articulately in so many forms. Called television civil rights leader of Black Enterprise magazine, Tony Brown is one of America's leading experts in the broadcasting industry and a pioneer in black affairs. This writer, lecturer, educator, and community activist is most noted as the host and executive producer of Tony Brown's Journal, the nation's longest running national black affairs television series. Mr. Brown is also noted for his tenure as host and producer of the legendary Emmy nominated black journal. In his 16th year, Tony Brown's Journal is seen weekly nationwide on more than 240 PBS stations by an average of 5 million viewers. How else does this entrepreneurial communicator speak to his vast audience? It is through his weekly newspaper column and his quarterly magazine, which is also called Tony Brown's Journal. He has won numerous awards for his work, including Man of the Year from the National Newspaper Publishers Association. He has also been honored as one of the 100 most influential black Americans by Ebony Magazine. And he's been honored by Who's Who in the World, Who's Who Among Black Americans, Living Legends in Black, and the Black American Reference Book. Mr. Brown was the first founding dean of the School of Communications and professor at Howard University, where he established a highly distinguished academic and professional record. Without further ado, I would like to present a communicator's communicator, and a communicator for the people, Mr. Tony Brown. of people in this country, with the exception of, of black people, is phenomenal. 
He has been re-elected by a landslide. He's favored. Ronald Reagan lacks one thing, however, and that is a place in history. Now look at the irony of all of this. Everybody in America voted for Reagan, the blacks. But the only group in America that can deny him a place in history is blacks. See, he cannot go down in history as a fair human being unless he addresses himself to the crisis in the black community. Which is precisely why, and you watch, in the next four years, you are going to be amazed at the attention that Reagan pays to your problem. Reagan needs this. Reagan needs to be remembered as someone who is fair, and he has everybody on his side but us. And please remember, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease. So don't let anybody convince you that because you didn't vote for Reagan, you're an idiot. Don't let anybody convince you that because you're on the losing side, you didn't win. Just watch the way it'll work. See, I have a lot of faith in us. I have a lot of faith in us because I have a lot of faith in our culture. And in this country, ladies and gentlemen, what we frequently refer to as race, more accurately and accurately could be referred to as culture. You see, please understand this, that those of us who are Africans, and that's what we are, have learned to deny the fact that we are Africans. That you've learned it. You've learned it just like you learned to count and breathe oxygen. You've learned to reject yourself. No one, ladies and gentlemen, can do to us what we are doing to ourselves. It can't be done. We have to be involved in our own oppression or we couldn't be oppressed. Now just take a very good look at America. Where did everyone in America come from? With the exception of the Native American, what we call the Indian, everyone in America came from somewhere else because we are a country of immigrants, hyphenated Americans. Now there are 62 million English Americans. They came from England. There are 49 million German Americans. They came from Germany. There are 40 million Irish Americans. They came from Ireland. Now, the Germans can go back to Germany, the Irish can go back to Ireland, and the English can go back to England. But can you go back to Negro land? <laughs> Do you know why you can't go back to Negro land? Because there is no such place as Negro land. Now, how is it that everybody is still what they were 400 years ago, and over the period of 400 years, we turned into something else? Why aren't we still African? If they're still English and Irish and Germans, why aren't we still African? Why do we have to turn into all these other things? Because this country has established an implicit and an explicit expectation that if you are an African, you must want to be white. And if you do not want to be white, you dislike white people. We have a condition in this country that if you like being black, you are accused of not liking whites. And we try to prove we don't like dislike whites by disliking ourselves.